I am doing an online course at the MIT. It's called Underactuated Systems. It's about robots that have more degrees of freedom than they have actuators. And as an example, they use the Acrobot. And I made some demos I want to show you. The Acrobot uh, is connected to the world uh, with one free joint that has no motor, no actuator. And it has an, an but it has another joint at the elbow, which has uh, a servo motor attached to it. And the first task we did is make the ro uh, the robot, make the acrobots stand upside down. And um, how we did this is uh, first it, uh, it, it took two phases. The first phase is uh, increase the energy such that uh, the total energy of the system equals the in energy you need at the endpoint. So the energy at the endpoint is the potential energy, the, the, the weight multiplied by the height. And uh, but when you are swinging up, the kinetic energy, the movement energy plus the potential at energy at that moment should equal the total amount of energy in the system. And then you have a chance. It's not even certain. Then you have a chance that you come in the, in a in a region where uh, where you can stabilize the ro robot. And then comes the second phase, and then you take a, a linear controller which presses the Acrobat in the vertical direction. Now I want to show you two uh, simulations. Secondly, we made a robot catch a ball. And for this problem we used a more advanced solution than the first one. Uh, in fact, it's a uh, quite advanced uh, black box. And you can give it uh, uh, all the dynamics of the system. system. Uh, you can give it several constraints, like uh, the end constraint that the position of the ball should match the ends of the, of the robot. And you give it some uh, function to, optimi to optimize. In this case, uh, we minimize the total uh, uh, total force we had to apply. Uh, it's important to understand that it is uh, that it is a, a simulation, uh, and, and also we assume that that we know all parameters at every moment, including the position of the ball, and uh, the ball has also a fixed trajectory, so we know perfectly what to do. In fact. As another exercise, we added a cost for the height at which the robot catches the ball. So the higher the better. This is the result. Now we have to make this controller usable for real-time solutions. There are two problems. One is and that the optimiz optimization time is much longer than the total animation time. So this uh, animation took a few seconds and it took approximately one minute to, uh, to optimize on my computer. So imagine how it is for more complex robots. Secondly, uh, we, need, we need the controller to be more robust. So uh, it must, it must uh, deal with variations in the trajectory of the ball, for instance. So what we do is we uh, rec make a record of the of the of the control, and then we add a linear controller on top of that, which uh, is uh, which can vary a little bit uh, on uh, based on the input signals of the of the sensors, for instance. So uh, I play the animation three times, and you will see slight uh, derivations of the of the original. <laughs> 